Hi everybody, I'm Mike Armstrong. I have these six straight lighter guards. I've got these wires coming out of me. But um, I'm going to talk about a, a couple of things, hopefully very quickly, a, a couple of ways that I use the iPod Touch and language arts, and also um, in the greater scheme of things, this is Chris Sebastian, our librarian, how he and I kind of collaborate on working on creating a community of readers at the school for using the, the, some of the applications in the iPod Touch. But first of all, one of the really powerful things about the, the iPod is the fact that you can digitally record directly to the iPod Touch. And that's something that is, I mean, there are so many ways, just start to think in a classroom how many different ways that digital recording, audio recording could be used in a classroom. Um, one, there are several applications that do that, iTalk. Um, there are even some that do four-track recording directly to the iPod, so it's really pretty advanced. But what you need for it, <coughs> along with the iPod Touch, uh, this is a, the black thing, it's a little digital microphone, and then I have the earbuds attached to it, and you can just monitor while you're recording. Uh, so that, that's basically how that works. Um, but. One of the applications that I like a great deal is one called Voice Memo, which right here I'll open it. And this is a, a, a really neat application because basically all you need to do to work it is just <coughs> hit the record button. You put the microphone in, hit the record button, and start talking or have a kid talking. It's just that easy. It's just start and stop. It's, you know, anyone can do it. Um, but one of the things that, that, I've, that we've been using this for is teachers using it for reading support. Say that you have a student who's reading below grade level and they can't access text without audio support. Well, we all know about audiobooks, but not everything's on an audiobook. And you may have a real short nonfiction piece and content area, and you have a couple of students that, that can't get it on their own reading. So what you can do is you, you can, you can five or ten minutes, just read it into the iPod. Then the next day in class, while you're reading, you have that student an iPod and some earbuds, and they have their audio support that quickly. So again, for, for those applications, it's, it's, it's huge. The other thing, and I, I've just started to think about this, and I wanted to mention it very quickly, is the fact that on this application, one of the things it, it does is that you can, um, if you hit here, there's, if you look at the lower corner, there's a share button. And what you can do is email these as MP3 files anywhere. If you email it to a Mac and you open it up, it immediately opens in iTunes. So you have it archived in iTunes, whatever you just recorded. But the cool thing about it, and I was just thinking about this today, is that a lot of times as a teacher, I have things that I want to explain to the students who are absent. And I write these long paragraphs about what I was trying to explain, like dynamic and static characters or something like that. And, but what I can do now is simply um, record my explanation, hit the share button, email it to the student's home, and they can listen to it. You know, it's just as MP3 files. So, so again, it's a lot quicker for me. It, 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 it will work very well. Um, the other thing that we use this for is um, doing book talks. And I've got to see this one. This morning, and this is again the mobility factor. This this morning, I had this great kid, Avery, and I said, Avery came in this morning. I said, Avery, you want to do a book talk? And he said, Yeah. Do I have to do it in front of the class? I said, No. I said, Take the iPod and go find some place quiet. Go down to the workroom and do a book talk. So he took the microphone and everything, and um, let's see what he did. Hello, <laughs> 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 my name is Avery, and I just recently read the book The Misfits by James Howe. This book is about four kids that are somewhat outcasted from their middle school. Their names are Bobby, Addie, Joe, and Skeezy, and are each different in their own way. They hold regular meetings at the local candy kitchen in their town and call themselves the Gang of Five to throw people off. Well, you get the idea of the power of this. I mean, it's just really quick, really easy, and good to go. The, the other thing uh, I wanted to mention again very quickly is um, in my class, you know, the teachers like to do warm-ups, and the most popular warm-up in my class is what is known as Word Game Wednesday. If you ask the sixth grader on the Explorers team about Word Game Wednesday, they get, just get this glassy look in their eyes um, because they really love it. And their favorite game to play is a game called Word Food. And 
I'll open that. And my objective as a language arts teacher is to get kids to have fun with words, to play with words, because I want them to write. I want them to love words and be a word nerd like I am. So what I do is just we get involved in these word games. But, but, but you can see that this game has a versus. Um, it's a word creation game. It's got a versus. And here, if you look, okay, um, we're going to fight. Megan and I are going to fight. And I'm not really going to fight. She's going to fight. And um, so Megan now, you see, she's got a karate chop to make her words. And, uh, and again, in my class on Wednesdays, the students just stand up. <laughs> and the cool thing is that it's all across the room that because they're accessing on the network. Sometimes they don't even know who they're playing. So again, it's a great deal of fun, and it's a really great way to enjoy work.